Well, taking a look at Intel, it signed a near $33 billion deal with Germany to build a chip manufacturing plant after the German government pledged to cover a third of the funding. Now, this move marks one of the biggest foreign investments in Germany, according to Economy Minister Robert Habeck. Now, Intel is also set to meet its growing chip demand with their plans to build a semiconductor assembly and test facility in Poland, as well as a manufacturing plant in Israel. Well, joining us now is Dan Howley to discuss Intel's push to really diversify its production sources. Dan, what are you tracking? That's right, Rochelle. We have these uh, different opportunities that Intel seems to be jumping on, especially in Europe. This is all part of, as you said, this opportunity for the company to try to diverse itself, uh, diversify itself. This is a larger push in the ch uh, chip industry, though, to kind of push away from its uh, Asia kind of dominance uh, more towards uh, Europe and the U.S. as uh, relations with China have deteriorated over time. And so we're seeing more companies come forward, more countries uh, tie up with these countries, uh, companies rather, to try to get plants built. So in Germany, we have that $32.8 billion facility. It's gonna be two facilities, actually, that's land that they purchased in 2022. Uh, Germany saying they're gonna uh, put in 9.9 .9 billion euros for the deal. And the first one is expected to open in four to five years. They also announced a facility in Poland that would be a $4.6 billion assembly and testing facility uh, over there. And they say that those two plants, uh, the Polish and the German plants, would be able to kind of create a new kind of network of semiconductor, semiconductor manufacturing in Europe. But it's not just that. There's also Ireland, where uh, the company also has a $7 billion investment in its existing facility. It's expanding there. And then, oh, yes, they're also investing more in Israel. They already have uh, a plant there as well as R&D. Uh, they have an agreement in principle, though, to build a new manufacturing plant. Uh, the deal is supposed to be valued at about $25 billion, and the company already has 12,000 workers there. This is in addition to uh, the plants that they are building in the U.S., in Arizona, as well as in Ohio. So clearly Intel really pushing the envelope here as far as its ability to produce more plants, produce more chips. And this is all part of CEO Pat Gelsinger's plans to push the company forward, become uh, a leader again in the manufacturing as well as technology uh, behind semiconductors and potentially be a third party fabricator, uh, a fabricator for third party companies as well. And we already knew that Intel was going to be this big beneficiary from the CHIPS Act. How do you think how they're positioning themselves now perhaps stacks them up against some of their rivals? Yeah, so the, the thing here is that, you know, TSMC, Thailand Semiconductor, uh, they're still ahead as far as overall technology goes. Uh, so, you know, they obviously get the kind of play from NVIDIA, which relies on them, as well as other companies uh, that just kind of lean into TSMC as their, their fabricator. So Intel kind of wants to jump on that train as well. There's some investors uh, and analysts who are like, well, you know, focus on what you're good at. Don't try to get into third-party manufacturing at this point. Really shore up your technology. But Intel is saying, look, we can do both at the same time, so why not? Uh, so as far as the, the technology goes, they're continuing to push forward uh, as far as trying to get, uh, you know, even pace with uh, TSMC's capabilities. As far as NVIDIA and those kind of companies, you know, Intel is pushing into the GPU space. They obviously are heavy in the CPU space. That's where they make all of their money. That's what they're, they're known for. Uh, but NVIDIA does have a sizable lead as far as the GPU capabilities, uh, as well as uh, name brand recognition. So a lot of companies jumping on there. I think it's also worth pointing out that, you know, larger uh, companies, the likes of, you know, Google, Amazon, they're trying to produce their own chips in-house. So they don't necessarily have to spend as much money on chips from the likes of NVIDIA, Intel, uh, AMD. Uh, they want to make their own chips to power their own uh, server facilities. So we'll have to see how those kind of work out. But you know, for Intel, uh, obviously the stock has been beaten down compared to uh, NVIDIA, which is just, you know, I mean, that's been a rocket ship, right? So it, it, it'll be interesting to see how these new facilities, how the new technologies then play into that. And if the company can really start to, to claw back some of those uh, leads that it had in the semiconductor industry to begin with. Indeed, especially as we see where AI demand could be headed at the moment. Thank you for that update, our very own Dan Howling. Thanks so much.